Ermi's Gasparini just posted a new training video in which he was working on his radial deviation or wrist rise. In this video, Ermi's managed to hit a new record on a variation of the Devon wrist rise lift, and I wanted to talk about it because I think that this lift is super important for Ermi's in particular, even way more important than for someone like Devon or Levon. Let's take a look at the clip. So as we saw in the video, Hermes ended up hitting 57 kilograms, which is roughly equivalent to 125 pounds, so I think he's actually starting to get right up to where Devin is on this same lift. I'm not sure how much Levon could lift, but honestly, he could probably just destroy the world record without training the lift just like with the pronation one. But I think that this lift is especially important for Hermes. This is the kind of lift that could lead to him getting revenge on Devin someday, and I think it will even help him against Levon. The reason for this is that Ermi's arm is just not very long for a super heavyweight arm wrestler. Most people consider a greater arm length to be a universal advantage in the unlimited weight class, but I don't necessarily think this is the case. Having a long or a short arm is a trade-off. If you have a long arm, you have a lot more potential to generate height in a match. However, you also have a lot less leverage to apply elbow flexion. On the other hand, if you have a really short arm, you have much better leverage for applying elbow flexion into the match. The problem is you now have a lot less potential to generate height in a match. This tends to result in a situation where the guy with a shorter arm has his wrist flexion exposed, and the guy with the longer arm has an easier time in protecting his wrist. This is part of why someone like Devin does a really good job of never letting his wrist get totally cracked back. This isn't because his cupping is the strongest in history, but rather that the combination of his arm length and his open sweeping top roll pulling style allow him to protect his wrist from a technical standpoint. And this brings us back to Ermes. Ermes can theoretically implement this exact same strategy Devin can. However, there is a crucial step for Ermes in doing this. He absolutely must keep his wrist rise engaged. For Devin, his arm is long enough that even if he dumps his wrist rise, he can still use this same strategy and protect his wrist decently well. But if Ermes loses his wrist rise against a taller arm wrestler, it's going to be nearly impossible for him to pull in a style that protects his wrist flexion. And this is exactly what we saw when Ermes arm wrestled Devin at East versus West. Devin defeated Ermes' wrist rise, which gave him direct access to Ermes wrist flexion, and then he just ran right through it. However, if Ermes can continue improving the strength of his wrist rise, Devin will not be able to do this. The match might look a lot more like the Ermes versus Vitaly match, where we saw Ermes consistently rising up and over the top via his wrist rise and elbow flexion. This was all made possible by Ermes realizing his weakness after the Devin match and training hard to eliminate it. I'm super excited to see Ermes continue to progress on this lift. Ermes has all the arm power in the world, the only problem for him is trying to gain access to it, and this exercise is going to help him do exactly that.